So the story behind the Billabong Boudoir series. I never could have anticipated that I would be painting bathtubs and um, Lara birds and echidnas all on one canvas at the end of 2019. Never could have um, guessed that. But then what happened was um, we went on a wonderful five week trip to Europe, Ireland and the UK. And that was a great catalyst for this whole story. I remember we flew into Paris on New Year's Eve and I mean what a night to fly into Paris. The, the city was ablaze with these red ribbons and banners um, and the Parisians were dressed to the nines and there was this air of, of festivity and glamour and oh, such joy and I remember walking those Parisian streets that night just thinking there is so much beauty I cannot take it all in and the next morning of course the streets were empty it was so quiet so we were walking down the avenues and we would be looking towards the side and I would see the Sacre Coeur poking its beautiful elegant shape out there and I was just thinking this is almost um, it's too much to take in. I felt like I was having my mouth wide open under a water hydrant, uh, but I couldn't catch all the beauty that was there. And now you would be walking the streets, the avenues, and they would be, even in the trellis work, the, the, the design was so elaborate and fantastic. The doorknobs, um, the window sills. I was just blown away by the attention to beauty. And in the everyday things, it was everywhere. So from there we hopped a little bit to Cologne and Amsterdam and, and what I loved about this whole trip, Ireland and Scotland, was every time you go into a new country and a new city, there would be these new language, new sounds, new tastes. The architecture would be a little bit different. I mean everything in Amsterdam is a little bit hipster and quirky. Uh, I just remember all that beautiful trellis work there as well and the buildings being just slightly off kilter. I just loved that and all those beautiful people on their bicycles. It was just, again, so much abundance, so much beauty. Um, and then you would go to Edinburgh where everything was stately and proud and, and wild to a certain degree. I just absolutely loved the diversity that I saw everywhere. And we ended our trip in London and the last place we visited was the British Museum. Uh, and I remember walking into the museum and there was a section on, um, on of course, every culture and every country. And there I could also find the section on South Africa and my roots and the culture that I'm from. And I was so proud looking into the, the glass display unit, seeing this exquisite dress this African dress that's been designed and there was you know, um, uh, people painted, they, 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 um, their portraits painted into the dress and there it was Ms. Um, Nelson Mandela was for example in that specific dress I remember so vividly and all the beads and the design and the colours and I was standing there having that sense of this is an amazing planet we are living on and yes we are all very different but there is beauty everywhere and yes the diversity is there but we are all really connected there is that sense of a one humanity and a richness of that tapestry that we're all really are building on this little tiny blue dot and I just absolutely love that now on the one hand I had all that beauty that was just coming at us uh, you know 400 kilometers an hour and then at night we would go into the hotels and we would be we would um, switch the televisions on and, and on the television sets you would see um, our Australian country just burning, burning and you know these fireballs just demolishing people's homes and um, devastating wildlife and the landscape and I remember so clearly how I felt how could these two parallel universes be existing at the same time yeah, it was a very unsettling feeling on the one hand to have this beauty and, and, and abundance and on the other side this terrible sadness and loss but I do think going into the British Museum somehow connected it for me that whole sense that we're in this together um, 
you know, we are not islands. We are islands, but we're not really islands. Um, there is this threat that binds us all together. There should be this respect between us for, for everything we contribute. Anyway, so I was sitting at Heathrow um, Airport um, when I was just paging through a very ordinary um, design magazine. And towards the end, um, the, 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 the back of the end of the magazine, there was this whole section on French bath tubs. Um, because throughout this, the, the holiday up to that point, I was thinking, how on earth, as an artist, how, how will my art practice change? What, what will I be painting? Surely you cannot have these experiences and just do the same thing. But I didn't know, I didn't know how it was going to resolve. Anyway, so I was sitting at Heathrow um, at the airport looking at this magazine with a bathtubs and, and then this idea out of really nowhere just came that I thought, well, wouldn't it be just fantastic having this beautiful Lara Burgess striding into the boudoir and she would be so at place there. She would just fit in because she's extraordinary and beautiful and lovely. Um, and I think that's where it started, where I thought of taking our extraordinary and exquisite fauna and flora and putting it into these exquisite and elaborate rooms filled with bathtubs um, and design. Uh, I once um, had this mathematics lecturer, she was amazing. She always spoke about maths and specifically functions and she would speak about a function machine and that you've got fx is your function machine but the x is the variable that goes into every unique function machine and the result is different for every function and I think that's sort of what happened we all I think as artists and as people we all have our unique function little function machine um, and whatever variable, if we pay much enough attention to the variables around us and allow those variables to really come and sit in our, in our thoughts and our minds and, and we process that, we pay attention, at the end there is a result, there is something um, within us change but, but at the end there is a painting series and, and therefore I'm thinking and if the question is asked, what, what are you going to paint next? I really have no idea. The only thing that I know that I must do is I must pay attention. I must slow down enough to pay attention to what is happening around me. So that, so that this function machine can do whatever it needs to done, be done and something, something might happen. <laughs> but um, at this point, I am having so much fun painting these stories I think of them as stories um, every time I start a new painting I get really really excited because I'm thinking oh what will the room look like what the colors will be what, which animals are we going to introduce will there be drama will it be nice and quiet will there be tension I just love telling those stories and um, yeah that's the story behind the Billabong boudoirs part of the way that I pay attention or try to pay attention um, I would often go into the bush and I would sit and draw. Just to give you a sense, I've got this book, my sketchbook. So here I've made some, just some drawings as I'm, I'm walking and sitting in the bush. I would write down some stuff um, and I would make some sketches and drawings. And then eventually these drawings um, become like a little map. I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> For example, this is one that you see over here. Uh, that's why in my initial my initial map or idea that eventually resulted in um, the painting here behind me that I call Greeny the Green Room. I've also, I've called fondly the Green Room. Um, yeah, that's where that one started. And um, so you can see, for example, this here is the design that I have used for the latest one, which would be the Beach Boudoir. I'm going to try and see whether I can get the. Um, it closer for you but it really all starts with an 
an initial design, an initial sketch, an initial drawing. And once I've, I've done the drawing like this, I then go on to the canvas and I start drawing the design onto the canvas just using a pastel pencil. I'll show you. For example, this is the first stage of the painting. In this piece I have I've drawn in and now I went over the drawing with um, an acrylic um, an acrylic paint. I, I try I, I like mixing the colors. So in here I, I mixed two colors to get a greeny black because in this painting I'm going to use a lot of greens and soft burnt sienna uh, and soft dusty pinks. So um, I decided that the, a green, a dark green background would be ideal. All of this at this point is just done in acrylics. So the next step therefore would be to start putting the, the, the background in. Um, again, for this I, I really like using the, the uh, a wash kind of look. So I built the texture up using water uh, and stencils, yes, but I, to, to, to create the textures I would sometimes use um, non-slip matte, so I would make the mixtures nice and watery, put the colours on, the acrylic colours, and put the non-slip matte on to make like um, an impression, and then once it's almost dry I'll peel the, the non-slip matte off and then you've got the lovely um, texture of whatever the pattern was on the non-slip matte. I often also use, you know, when you when you get um, goods delivered to you, often it's wrapped in plastic. So I would hang onto the plastic, and then um, I will again make the mixes nice and watery at the background, and then put the plastic on top and maneuver it with my hands um, to get lovely little patterns and lights and darks happening. And then almost when it's almost dry, which may take a few hours. I just pull it off and then you've got lovely, a lovely little texture design at the back and then onto that I paint. Um, usually the, the, the floor or the, the, the ground level is um, flat brush so I use a nice big brush and burnt sienna and I, again I make the burnt sienna not totally strong, I like using transparent colours and just very loosely just cover the base of the painting where the floor would be or the table would be with um, with a brush strokes of burnt sienna and that that also hints at the texture of the wood or um, the earth uh, so again I'm trying to think of the textures that I want to create in the in the big image and once those two washes are down the floor and then the, the wallpaper and, and, and I, I cover every area of the painting with those either the, the, the burnt sienna or the textured color once that's all in and dry I bring out the oils and the rest of the painting is only oils um, but I will I will show you all right so I've prepared my um, my paints there my golden paint. I'm just adding some water to make it nice and a little bit more runny. You can see that section there. I want, I want the idea of the light falling in. So I am dry before I put the texture on. Might have to cover the chair a little bit there. That's fine. and 
dark. Now, of course, over some of these, there will be painting. Great, that's fine. I just want some more there. Um,